And in respect of the other matter that's in the public domain, which is the employment of Mr. Wallace's daughter, yeah. um, did you have anything to do with that? Um, I'm very happy to ask questions about this, even though it is a matter that's been referred to the IPCC. I'm very happy to be completely open with the committee. Please. I've, again, I've done nothing wrong. I was a post box. I was a post box for a CV uh, from Mr. Wallace's daughter, where I've made some notes in an email. Again, very happy to give the committee the email, which gives a completely equivocal, equivocal interest in whether she gets employment or not. I pass on that email and the CV to the Director of Human Resources, HR and the Met. Thereafter, I don't know what's happened to it. It's, and it happens all the time. You know, I know numbers of members of Parliament employ friends, family, and, ever, and, and all those issues. So it is just, you know, in 2000, bear in mind this was January 2009. Right. I think that's a very important point. Mm-hmm. I wasn't in charge of specialist operations, had nothing to do with phone hacking, I'd never touched it. And I simply acted as a post box for an application. So you can categorically deny to this committee that you, in the word, in inverted commas, secured this job for Mr. Wallace's Absolutely, Wallace categorically about and the facts speak for themselves. It is simply, there's one email from me, and I've even said in the email that, please let me know, Director of HR, what the position is, so I can manage expectations, as in, I'm completely equivocal whether this individual gets the job or not. The Met employs people all the time. We had massive IT projects, we wanted short-term staff on, that's what we did, and I had absolutely nothing to do with her employment. I was simply a post box. Dr. Hubbard. Thank you. Uh, the evidence we, you, you've clearly missed is just stunning, and your, your name seems to come up quite a few times. Firstly, how close were you to Mr. Wallace? We've heard you were close friends since yeah, 98, again, is that right? Again, I've been described as close friends. Uh, I became friends with him. I first met Mr. Wallace, I don't think it was 1998, whenever I was staff officer of the Commissioner, which I think it was 2000. 2000. Uh, I met him once then. I must have met him in, the, in the, the next sort of five to six years, two or three times per year, if that, mostly in the company of others, but occasionally on our own. I think some of those are declared anyway in, 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 the, in the hospitality register. Um, I would see Mr. Wallace, I reckon, because I have given this some thought, because I have been described as, you know, I do not go round to his house on a regular basis. I must have been around there once to pick him up to go to a football match. It's mostly sport related with other people. I would see him. I would see him two or three times a year. Now that's you know, he's a friend. Okay. <laughs> about, I, I can't that. be. I can't but be clear. But I, I think I've been. You know, um, if we, Mr. Wallace has done something wrong, let me be absolutely clear. You, you're he, telling he, us he, needs to he be, is a friend of yours. Yeah. He's a friend, I, and I've been right. open Thank with you. this committee. We accept that, that he's a friend of yours. Yes, Mr. but Dr. don't, don't get the impression that we are the bosom buddies living in each other's houses, because that's just not the case, and he would never We understand that. We get the message.